Welcome to part 3 of the 3D Noise Flow Field in Unity tutorial by Peerplay. What you see here are some of the possible results to create with this system at the end of this part. In this part, we will start moving our particles based on noise directions in the flow field. As you can see, this creates some magical effects at which you can stare for hours, at least I can. In the following part, we will start creating an audio visualization system based on the flow field. The presets you see here are included in the source files of this episode available at my Patreon. You can support me creating these free tutorials by becoming a patron and get access to all the source files as well. Special thanks to Andrew Laboy, Devin the Dude and Derek Vechter. In the previous part we left off where we can spawn particles inside the flow field at a certain distance from each other. The particles aren't moving yet, so we will now make them move in the directions of the flow field cells. We already created the flow field particle class, so let's open up that file. There are many ways of approaching the movement of the particles. We could create variables for velocity and acceleration and writing out our own physics. In this example I'm going for a different approach. The idea is that the particles will constantly move in their forward direction at a certain speed. The flow field will then send a direction vector to this class and this class will rotate towards the direction at a certain rotation speed. So the first variable we'll add is a public float and we'll call this the move speed. Now in the update we're going to constantly move this object in its forward direction. So we're going to say this dot transform dot position plus this the transform dot forward multiplied by the move speed and we'll multiply this by time dot delta time. Now we'll create a public void so we can communicate with the void through the noise flow field script and we're going to call this public void the apply rotation. And we're going to add two different parameters to this void. The first thing is the rotation, so let's say a vector 3 and we'll call this rotation and the second thing is going to be the rotation speed so we'll say rotate speed. Now let's create a look rotation based on the vector 3 rotation and for that we need a quaternion so we'll say quaternion and we'll call this the target rotation is going to be a quaternion dot look rotation and this requires the vector 3 so we'll get the rotation dot normalized. Now we want to make our transform smoothly rotate towards the target rotation. So we're going to say transform dot rotation is going to be quaternion dot rotate towards. And this requires a from to and the time that it takes. So we'll say from its current transform dot rotation to the target rotation and we'll use the rotate speed and we'll multiply this by time.delta time. And that's it for this class. So let's save this class and let's go over to the noise flow field script. So we need to adjust the particle move speed and the particle rotation speed. So let's add some variables that we can do that. And let me put this line underneath the spawn radius, which is a bit more logical. And let's add two more floats. And we'll call this one the particle move speed. And we'll call the other one the particle rotate speed. Now that we have all the variables that we need, let's create the particle behavior. So let's scroll down a little bit. And we're going to add a new void. I'll put the void in between the on draw gizmos and calculate flow field directions and let's create a new void and we'll call this the particle behavior and we're going to run the particle behavior in the update so let's add that to the update now we need to apply this to all the particles in the list particles so we can do this with a for each loop so for each flow field particle and we'll call this flow field particle P in the list particles. Now we need to apply the directions of the multidimensional array flow field direction to the particles. 
So we need to check for each particle its position and figure out within which cell the particle currently is. So we need to return a vector 3 integer to apply this flow field direction to any of the particles. So let's create a vector 3 integer and we'll call this the particle pos. And it's going to be a new vector 3 integer. And let's type on a new line. So we'll do this in steps. So the first thing we need to know is the current position of the particle. And the particle is called p. So p.transform.position.x. And from this position, we'll subtract the position of the flow field. So we'll say minus this.transform.position.x. Now let's put this between parentheses. And the sum of this is going to be divided by the cell size. Now to make sure that the sum of this equation is always within the size of the flow field direction, we're going to clamp this. So we'll say mathf.clamp. And we're going to clamp this value between 0 and the grid size minus 1. Now this equation still returns a float value and we need to have an integer so we're going to floor to an integer of this entire equation. So we'll type mathf.floor to int and we'll put parentheses around this entire thing as well and let's put a comma here. So this is for the x value so let's copy paste this for the y and z remove this comma and put a semicolon here and I actually made a mistake here because we have to say the grid size dot x and we'll say here the grid size dot y and the grid size dot z so let's change these values as well to y y and z z now we can use this particle pos to apply the correct rotation to the particle. So let's say p dot apply rotation. And now we can assign the correct rotation from the flow field direction. So we'll say flow field direction. And as this is a multidimensional array, we will now specify the particle pos x, y, and z. So particle pos dot x particle pos dot y and particle pos dot z and for the rotate speed we'll use the particle rotate speed now let's also apply the move speed of the particle so we're going to say p dot move speed is going to be particle move speed and I'm setting these variables in the update so we can play around with the variables inside Unity to see what looks best. Now let's also set the scale of the particle in the update so we can change that as well. So we'll say p.transform.localScale is a new vector3 of the particle scale. Particle scale particle scale. Now let's save this script and go back to Unity to see the result. Back in Unity let's set the move speed and the rotate speed of the particles. I'm going to set the move speed to 10 and the rotate speed to 100. So let's see the result of what we've got so far. As you can see the flow field is working correctly. But when the particles hit the outside of the box, they are not responding to the directions anymore. So we need to do something about that. And what we are going to do is that when the particles hit the border, they will be teleported to the opposite side of the box. Inside the for each loop, we're going to check on each particle its x, y and z edges. So let's first check the x edges. We're going to make an if statement and we're going to say that if p dot transform dot position dot x is higher than this dot transform dot position 
dot x plus the grid size dot x multiplied by the cell size. And for the other side of the x, it's just an if statement of if the p dot transform dot position dot x is smaller than this dot transform dot position dot x. So if it's higher, then we're going to set the transform to the opposite side. So we're going to say that p dot transform dot position is going to be a new vector three, and it's going to be in its x going to be the this dot transform dot position dot x of the grid, and we're going to keep the current transform dot position in its y and z axis. So we're going to say p dot transform dot position dot y and p dot transform dot position dot z now for the other side we're going to say that p dot transform dot position is going to be a new vector 3 and this is going to be the opposite side so we can copy paste this here and paste it here and for the y and z axis is the same so we can copy paste this as well semicolon. Now we just have to do the same for the y and z axis so let's copy paste this because we're not going to type it all over again so this is going to be for the y and now let's just replace everything so I've skipped this little part where I replace all of the positions but you can of course pause the video and write this into your own script now once you're done, let's save the script and go back to Unity again. Now let's see the result of this. As you can see, the particles are now staying inside of the box. And I can even move the box around and they stay inside of the box. Now there is still one thing missing, and that is to set the offset of the noise directions. At this point, the directions of the flow field don't change over time, so the particles will keep their current path. We need to change the offset by the offset speed. So I can manually set the offset speed or something different. And if I drag this out, then you can see that the positions are changing. But we want to do this automatically. So let's do that. And then we're going to check out all the possibilities with this flow field. So back in the script, let's go over to the calculate flow field directions. And we're going to set in here the offset. So we'll say offset is going to be a new vector 3. And that is going to be in its x position, its current offset dot its x plus the offset speed. Offset speed multiplied by time dot delta time and we can do the same for its y and z so let's copy this and paste comma paste and we'll set this to its y and this to its y and of course we have to set the offset speed to dot x and offset speed dot y and offset speed dot c so semicolon and that's it so let's save this script and go back to unity once more so now we can play around with the variables so let's set the move speed to 40 and the rotate speed to 150 I'll start with a little bit lower increment so about 3 and we can now set some different offset speeds so let's set the x to 4, the y to 1, the z to minus 2 now let's play the scene, we can tweak the number during runtime as well so there we've got our flow field looking pretty cool already now we can set the particle scale of course so make them really big cubes or very small cubes we 
we can also set the move speed higher or very low the rotation speed actually if you set the rotation speed very low then that means that the flow field doesn't have that much influence so if I set this to like 5 then they're actually just floating around and not having so much control of the directions of the flow field I'm going to set this to 100 again and something like 80 oh, let's that's very quickly let's put it to 40 now we can also increase the offset speeds so or actually change the increment so if we put the increment very low and we've got a lower resolution of noise in the next part we are going to make this system react to audio as well and create some stunning audio visuals. So thank you for watching this tutorial part. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you would like to support me creating these tutorials you can become a patron on my Patreon. You'll then get access to the source files of the tutorials. See you next time and happy coding.